Ladies and gentlemen, what is Cracker Lack and what is Popper Lop? And we've got two graphics cards right here that were both released in 2012. This one here is the HD 7950. It came in at 399 USD MSRP when it was first released, had three gigabytes of VRAM and was released on the 31st of January and has the GCN architecture. The one above it is the GTX 670, which came into the same MSRP of 399, but had a two gigabyte VRAM buffer and was released three months later on April 29th. However, I do believe you could get a four gigabyte variant of it. However, today's tests are going to be really interesting, at least for me personally, because I'm gonna be putting seven years later, both these graphics cards through the latest titles and seeing if the 7950 really has aged better than the GTX 670. Because a lot of people are saying that AMD's fine wine technology, if you bought this back in the day, it was gonna perform better in the future. And 2012, at least off the top of my memory, both these cards were performing in a similar ballpark. However, you may notice that both these graphics cards are looking a little bit dirty. So we're gonna give them some tech, yes, loving. That's where we clean them up so they can have the best chance of performing the best they can on the test bench. And also with that said, I picked up both these graphics cards for 40 Aussie dollars each, which is about 28 USD. So that's under 10% of what they were going for seven years ago. So talk about a bargain, but let's get this comparison on the road. So all the gaming benchmarks are finished and this one was very interesting because I actually looked around my studio and I had a GTX 670 four gigabyte edition as well. So we threw that into the benchmarks. Now with the overclocks, the two 670s are reference models, but when I overclocked this time, I decided to put the fan speeds on all three cards at 100%. That's gonna weed out the differences between this gigabyte edition, for example, being a pre-OC model and being able to perform higher. And so the overclocked versus overclocked versus overclocked figures are going to be pretty accurate in this case, but we'll pull up the first result here, Apex Legends, where I'm testing just outside of water treatment and I'm running across a bridge. And we see here that the 7950, it was a clear victory both out of the box and when it was overclocked, it just smoked the 670 solutions here. The four gigabyte addition really didn't make a difference here, even though when we put the four gigabyte in, it's going over that cap of two gigabytes usage for the VRAM. So it looks like Nvidia is doing something at a driver level to mitigate any potential VRAM bottlenecks in games. But looking at the next title now, Tom Clancy's The Division 2, we had another victory for the 7950, scoring 36 and 43 FPS respectively, versus the 670s, which performed in a similar ballpark. There wasn't too much of a difference here, uh, but moving over to a newer title, Generation Zero, I don't know if this is a mainstream title or if it's considered an indie title, uh, but this is where they performed in a similar ballpark between the 7950 and also the 670, but we will have to give the victory here to the uh, 7950 uh, as it did score higher results ultimately. Uh, but moving on now to Outward, which is a newer title as well. And uh, here's where the 670 actually scored a victory. But again, there wasn't really much of a difference at all between the two gigabyte and four gigabyte variant here for VRAM. So nothing much gained if you purchased that extra two gigabytes back in the day. Uh, but one title where it did make a difference was uh, Dirt Rally 2.0. And uh, here the 7950 scored out the victory overall, but we can see here that the four gigabyte edition did get better 1% and 0.1% lows. So if it's anything, we need about three gigabytes of VRAM to play on high settings for Dirt Rally 2.0 and have it be a smooth experience. But the last title we're looking at here is Anthem 1080p high settings. And this one was a victory for the 7950 yet again. Uh, wasn't a massive victory, but a victory nonetheless. And the two gigabyte and four gigabyte variants really didn't make a difference here on the side of the 670s. Uh, but moving over to Time Spy, just the standard edition, not the extreme edition, 
we saw the 7950 scoring about 300 points both out of the box and also when it was overclocked. And then the last figure we're looking at is power consumption where the 7950 did use up about 30 watts more if I had to average things out. So 670 is a bit more efficient, but the 7950 is giving you more performance. And if we look at titles like Apex Legends especially, that 30 watts is well worth it. So there we have it with the Radeon HD 7950 versus the GTX 670. Both these graphics cards back in the day were very popular. In fact, I'd say they were one of the most biggest changes for both AMD and Nvidia, where on AMD's side, they went from 40 nanometer to 28 nanometer and changed the architecture all in one go. And Nvidia also did the same thing, went to 28 nanometer and changed to Kepler. So we saw massive increases in efficiency and also performance too. So these graphics cards did mark a big era for PC gamers. And at the time, even though the 670 performed similar to the 7950, it's looking like nowadays the difference is in favor of the 7950, but how much of that is due to driver optimization truly continuing for the 670 remains to be seen. I mean, Outward being sort of like an outlier here did show the 670 beating the 7950. So I'm guessing in all the other titles, AMD have uh, optimized the drivers for the 7950 quite well, as opposed to say, for instance, on the 670, Nvidia might have just simply, even though they say they support the latest titles, they're sort of optimizing for Kepler. Maybe they're just leaving Kepler behind. Who knows guys, let us know in the comment section below what you think is going on between these two cards. But if you're in the market to buy either of these and they're the same price, I would definitely be going for the 7950 over the 670. Now also before I get on out of here, some interesting things to point out during this comparison was the two gigabytes of extra VRAM really didn't make a difference at all on that 670. And that's mainly because the card itself is limited by its mainstream processor's power and that we don't really have enough raw GPU power for the extra two gigabytes of VRAM to make a difference. And in case of the 7950, another odd behavior I saw was out of the box, it sort of struggled to get to a thousand megahertz it sort of jumped between 900 and 1000. I actually recorded this live on the capture card for you guys to see. But when we overclocked it, it just stuck at that 1120 megahertz score all day, every day. So that definitely did give the favor to the 7950, especially when it was overclocked. And it was good to see that it's actually more of a stable card when you overclock it. So the irony there is quite funny. Overclock your graphics cards for stability. But anyway guys, let us know in the comment section below which of these two cards would you pick I mean, if this one had a better cooler on it, yes, it's the reference cooler. Yes, it was back in the day when these reference coolers were obnoxiously loud once the graphics card had any strain on it. But to be fair, I put it up to 100% fan speeds for the overclocks, and that did bring the temperatures under 70 degrees. So it was fine to handle overclocks when you put that fan speed at 100%, even though it's unbearable. Uh, this card right here is definitely when Gigabyte we're on top of things, their wind force coolers are good. The overclocks are actually really good. This is one of my favorite generations of Gravis card for AMD. It's just when they got everything right, in my opinion, the cards overclocked well, the coolers were good out of the factory, the performance was great. But of course, I need to know what you guys think. Let us know in the comment section below. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And also, if you're out and about and need a game to play on your smartphone completely free, then check out today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Link is in the description below, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. So one of the three Windforce fans on that HD7950 actually like lifted up while I was uh, had the data vac on it, and it cut my finger, but I was just like, no, nah, I'm just going to keep going. So apparently the data vac can fix your wounds.